One thing I've been harping about on and off in some of my videos is this entire deal with the electric cars. And I want to start off this video and letting you guys know that I'm not inherently against electric cars, okay? In fact, I am actually sort of a tech geek kind of guy, you know? Like you wouldn't think that by looking at me, but I love having like new technology, right? I like having new, a new TV. I like having a new cell phone. I like having a new computer. like the latest stuff right like not always the latest stuff but i'm always interested in you know what's the latest thing that's coming out when it comes to technology but with cars for me it's different because as somebody who's kind of like a tech geek kind of guy i'm not nearly as fascinated with having an electric car and i'm going to go over a lot of things in this video that kind of back up why most things when they come out are usually better and superior to the technology that it's replacing in some way and it really makes you want to have it right well that's not really what we're seeing with electric cars and basically guys a lot of americans right now are totally against having an electric car because of all the issues you know recently we saw in chicago there was this whole situation over there where you had hundreds of people with teslas totally stranded over there because they could not charge the car and I watched some videos about that and it turns out there was a multitude of different reasons why. Like number one, they could not get the cars to charge. Even if every single car had a charging station available, whenever the batteries get to a low level and it's that cold, you can't charge the car. It needs to be kind of like pre-warmed up. So if you plug it into the charger, what's going to happen is the battery is going to spend like 45 minutes just warming up getting ready to charge when it's that cold. So you're gonna just waste a ton of time sitting there getting your car ready to charge. And that's if you get a working charger, which was the other half of the story. But the thing is guys, like automakers have been really hedging their bets in favor of having an all electric future. And in this decade, automakers are estimated to spend about $100 billion investing into the EV future for their brands, right? But here's the problem. As they continue pumping out these EV cars, people are not buying them. And I know some people, some people were telling me in that video, oh, you know, the Tesla sales have been booming in 2023 or whatever, but EVs consist of more than just Tesla, guys. Like newsflash, Tesla is not the only EV maker. In fact, all the major car manufacturers make EV cars now. Tesla is just kind of like one of the most popular ones. So let's take a look at this chart here from Cox Automotive. And what this chart shows is it shows that over the past year, that EV inventory has more than doubled on dealership lots and has now reached a record 114 day supply at the beginning of December of 2023. And that is a huge contrast compared to 71 days of inventory for the overall auto industry. And you guys can see with this chart going back to January of 2022, just how many EVs are basically piling up on the lots. Guys, they keep piling up and piling up. The number is continuing to go up. It's not going down. Now, yes, you can make the argument like, well, people aren't buying any of these cars, and that's why you're starting to see the white line go up too. That's all of the cars that are not electric that are starting to pile up, and that number is far smaller than the amount of EVs. By the way, I'm over here by the golf course in the mall here in Aventura. I tried walking around here once before, and when I was here, I literally got poured on. So today is a pretty nice day to be here. Now, this whole situation with the EVs has gotten so bad that 4,000 car dealerships nationwide have basically teamed up and wrote President Biden in November asking him to tap the brakes on his real unrealistic expectations for these EV government mandates, okay? And what they want is the government's trying to make it so that more than half of all US auto sales are electric cars by 2030. Well, that's in six years, guys. So they want more than half the sales to be electric in six years from now. And look at all the problems that have not been worked out. We're gonna kind of dive more into this here because I have a lot of information to cover. But how do you expect 
to make a transition that big in such a short period of time without having the proper infrastructure, without solving these you know, glaring issues with these cars not really working and uh, unfavorable weather conditions. Like not everybody lives in Florida and California where we just have you know, pretty nice temperatures all year round. And by the way, if you live in a really hot area, you can have similar problems with your electric car like people were having in the cold. Just like these batteries don't like the cold, they don't like extreme heat either. It can severely change the amount of mileage you can get out of the car, just like your cell phone or anything else. If you try using your phone out in the, the middle of the, the heat, the sun, it'll shut down, guys. Like it'll say, you know, it's too hot out here and it won't even work. And the same thing can happen with an electric car. And at least if it doesn't shut down, you can lose a significant amount of range instead. So according to most dealerships, what they're saying is a lot of their customers right now are mainly interested in hybrid models. So a hybrid is a gas powered vehicle that also has an electric motor in order to compensate and get better gas mileage. And you know, one of the most popular hybrid cars over the past couple decades was the Prius. And I remember when that thing came out, it was like, oh wow, this car gets 50 miles to the gallon. That was unheard of when this car came out. But still the majority of the auto sales in the United States are still the traditional internal combustion engine cars. 80% of auto sales in America are still internal combustion engine guys. And they want to crank that up to over 50% in the next six years. I don't see that happening for a lot of different reasons. Trying to make it change that fast is feeling forced. And that's kind of one of my biggest issues with all of this, you know, is the fact that they're trying to push this and make people do it, even though they don't want to. Because apparently, according to a survey that was done, a lot of Americans don't want this. First of all, electric cars are way more expensive than their counterpart. Um, about $13,000 more expensive on average than a brand new internal combustion engine car of a similar make and model. Throw in a higher interest rate environment like we have right now, that makes it even less appealing to drive one, but it's not obviously just the cost. There's a lot of other barriers to entry with this. Mainly, you know, the, the issues with charging, guys. Like now, I will say, if I lived in a house and I had my own charging station where I could charge my electric car anytime I wanted to, I would not be against having one as a second car, okay? I would not have it as my main car, but I definitely wouldn't mind having it as the grocery getter and just something to cruise around town with. I wouldn't be taking it on long road trips, but I wouldn't mind using it around town where I don't have to panic about the range and, and running out of juice prematurely. Just so you know, it's not like I am somebody who's against this 100% or anything. I am open to it, but I am also recognizing the fact that it is not ready for the masses due to the infrastructure not being there. Where I live, in a condo, I cannot charge this thing at home, and there's no way in hell I'm gonna drive 30 minutes to go charge the car and then sit there for another 45 and charge it and then drive another half an hour home. There's no way that's gonna happen. And apparently this is actually what's preventing a lot of people from being interested in buying these electric cars as well. They're saying that most people who are not interested in buying electric cars have what you would call range anxiety. And that's a legitimate concern for people to have, okay? Like unless you have a really old car and your gas gauge is not that accurate, you know when you're gonna run out of gas, guys. Your car will tell you way in advance before you actually do. And if you run out of gas, you're basically a fool, right? Unless you have an old car, like my, my old Camaro used to look like, uh, you know, it still has a quarter tank of gas and then next thing you know, you turn around and it's on empty, right? But that was one of the old school gas gauges that, you know, has the needle and all that stuff. All the new cars don't have that. But even Tesla recently came out and said, oh, sorry, you know, our range estimates for the cars are not as good as we said they were. Yeah, it's actually gonna be like 20% less. Now, that should be a lawsuit right there. Everybody who has purchased a Tesla thinking that they were getting a certain amount of range have now been gypped by the Tesla brand and they deserve uh, a partial refund, as far as I'm concerned, because you were sold a promise that's actually not true.
here's the facts about EV sales, guys. Everybody was getting oh, super amped up about this because it looked like it was something that was going to continue, you know, booming. But you got to look at when this happened. It all happened during the pandemic, right? Because in 2022, EV sales rose by 60%. In 2023, they went up by 47%. But now in 2024, it's estimated to only go up an additional 11% this year. So basically, they're plateauing is what this is telling us. And this is not just me saying this. All of the EV sales back this up. And even uh, Ford, they're dropping production of their uh, F-150. They're dropping it in half, guys. The F-150 Lightning, they're going to be significantly slowing down the production of these cars. And uh, General Motors, same thing. They had plans to produce an electric Chevy Equinox and Silverado pickup truck. They're delaying that altogether. They're not even going to produce them yet because they're realizing that the demand is not there. Why are we going to make these cars if no one's going to buy them, which is a smart business decision. And then you have seen over 2023, repeatedly, Tesla slashed prices on a bunch of their models, which has basically led to an EV price war and has brought the prices on these things down significantly, but it's still more expensive than a gas-powered car. But I'd be willing to bet that even if right now, today, if an electric car was the same price or even cheaper than a gas-powered car, people would still be buying the majority of gas-powered cars because of this so-called range anxiety, because of the restricted way that you're able to fuel the car up. Unless, like I said, guys, if you don't live in your own house and have your own charging station, then you're kind of SOL sometimes when it comes to filling up the car, and that's not a good position to be in, especially if you're using it as your main mode of transportation. So they're saying something that has really changed fundamentally since EVs started gaining popularity is that um, the initial rush of buyers, the initial pool of people that ran out and bought all these expensive cars because they were very expensive when they first came out, kind of like any other new technology, right? Well, those people were wealthy drivers who were purchasing an extra car for their household because they wanted the latest technology. Now that all the early adopters have gotten the EV cars, you know, the demand has fallen off a cliff because now it's only left to all the mainstream people who actually need that car to get from A to B to go out and buy them and they're not buying them. Now, one thing that they're saying that needs to happen without a doubt is that we need a more reliable charging network. This guy's saying here that he has a 200 mile commute, okay? And he makes this commute weekly from Omaha, Nebraska to Kansas City, Missouri, and there's only one charging station on that huge 200 mile commute. Guys, that is unacceptable, and there's no way that we can transition to an all electric car future in six years, okay? This, it's not possible with that little bit of infrastructure available along with all of the charging problems that have obviously been highlighted this winter. And as if all of that's not bad enough, it turns out that according to Consumer Reports, this is not me just making stuff up here because I'm against electric cars, guys, it's not it. Uh, Consumer Reports says that electric cars have 80% more problems than cars with traditional internal combustion engines. So, you know, I saw a YouTube video not that long ago, they interviewed a guy saying, oh, I love my electric car. And he, what, what was the main reason why? He said, because it doesn't have any issues. I don't have to get oil changes. I don't have to do regular maintenance and all of this. And I think he's uh, kind of mistaken about that. I don't think he really understands that there is still stuff that needs to be done in order to maintain your car. Just because there's no oil changes doesn't mean there's not other routine maintenance that needs to happen. And so apparently the number one problem that most electric car owners have with their electric car, the number one problem that it goes in for is the car not accepting a charge, guys. So this would be equivalent to not being able to put gas in your car. I don't care how much of a piece of crap car you drive, no matter how bad it is, if it runs, you can still put gas in it, okay? No matter what's wrong with the car, no matter what other problems the car might have, you're always gonna be able to put a tank of gas in it. It might not run if the car is that bad, but you can always put a tank of gas in it, right? Now this is a very like simple, fundamental issue that absolutely needs to be resolved before we can have electric cars become mainstream. That should be undisputed. And this even comes back to what I was saying earlier, like, yeah, it's great if you have an electric uh, charging station at home and you can charge your car at your house, so at least you don't have to worry about 
finding the public infrastructure to get your car charged on the regular but that doesn't even help you if your car will not accept the charge which is the number one problem that these cars are having and if we take a look at this chart the amount of people who are interested in having an electric car is actually going down guys because in 2022 42 percent of americans said they would not drive an electric car well now that number is up beyond 50 percent if you go back and look at 2016 through 20 19 it was actually above 50 percent all those years people were not interested in driving an electric car right and then as we got into the pandemic and they came out with this inflation reduction act and came out with all these ev tax credits for the cars you can see that the amount went down but i'd be willing to bet that's because of all the people that bought these cars due to all the incentives that were available this isn't actually because most people had an interest in getting one. It's because getting one became a much better deal between 2022 and 2023. They were abundantly available. They had huge price cuts and they had a government tax incentive to go ahead and go out and buy one. So, I mean, who wants to spend $55,000 on a brand new car and have to worry if it's gonna take a charge or worry if it's gonna get you to your destination? That's the same boat that I'm in, along with not being able to charge it at home. And honestly, guys, until those things get resolved, I would not buy an electric car either, especially because of how much better uh, internal combustion engine cars have gotten over the years. Like I used to drive a 1997 Camaro and then I upgraded to a brand new Jeep Grand Cherokee a few years ago. And the difference is night and day, not only on uh, fuel preservation and you know miles per gallon that you get for the car, but also reliability guys like old cars can be very unreliable at least that car was you know it broke down a lot left me stranded i don't know how many times and it just got to the point where it, it really got old you know but guess what i have never gotten stranded with my jeep not even once it has never let me down i've never had to worry if i was going to get to my destination since i've been driving it and i've been super happy with it so as somebody who bought a brand new car how would you convince someone like me to uh switch over to an electric vehicle guys like right now currently there's not one single incentive that makes sense for me it's like oh yeah i want to do that you know and i'm just telling you from my own uh point of view as a consumer somebody who would buy another car in the future and is in the position like hey i already have something that i really like why am i going to switch to something different that's going to give me more headaches and it's going to be more inconvenient for my lifestyle especially since I like to take long road trips. A lot of you guys followed me through my road trip over the summer, guys. My Jeep can get 600 miles on one tank of gas. That is not an error. You can look it up, do the math yourself on Jeep's website, but that's what it gets, guys. 600 miles on one tank of gas. There is no EV in existence that can get that kind of range. And imagine the amount of time that saved me on the road where I didn't have to stop every two hours and put a charge in a car. I saw another uh, news story where they put this uh, news anchor guy in an electric car, I think it was a Tesla, and he had to drive from Chicago to New York City. That was kind of like um, an experiment that they did to find out, hey, uh, you know, how much longer is it gonna take to drive uh, with an electric car versus what it would take with a gas-powered car? And they determined it would, took several hours longer and consistently the Tesla was getting less mileage range than it was saying that it was going to. And finding these charging stations is not as easy as just finding a gas station. So once again, back to what we were saying earlier, the infrastructure is just not there yet. And you know, sadly, this is becoming something as divisive and as political as the vaccine, guys. Like, you know, the government was trying to force the vaccine down everybody's throat and trying to put all these mandates in saying you can't do this you can't do that if you don't take it now it's come out that there's been a lot of problems with that people who were forced to take it have health issues i know a few people who have those health issues but the thing is now it's becoming the same thing but with electric cars you know they're trying to force people into buying one that don't want to have one and it's not right you know it's not right what they're doing once again 
they should let the free market do its work you know let the free market do its job and if a lot of people want these cars then they're going to be able to compete price wise and more people are going to choose to buy them not be forced to buy them and you know here's the thing that gets me about this more than anything is this whole debate and like huge lie about it that it's actually more environmentally friendly which is not true at all because guess what it takes a tremendous amount of gas powered energy to go out there and mine for the rare earth precious metals and minerals that are needed in order to produce these batteries and there's a finite amount of those resources available just like anything else on earth and they're saying that that's not sustainable we cannot continue to mine all of these rare earth minerals and produce these batteries indefinitely guys it's not going to happen i heard that there's a company out there that is now recycling ev batteries so at least that's a good thing even that i'm sure has diminishing returns i'm not sure how many times you can recycle a battery and it will still work is that something that can happen for infinity i don't know but more importantly than that you know the other big lie is that it's better for the environment when you drive an electric car well sure maybe as you're driving the car down the road it doesn't have any actual emissions but what about filling up the car with the electricity to begin with where does all that come from well let's take a look at what the epa's website says now the most recent data that they have is from 2021 and it says right here that fossil fuels still remain the most common fuel type for electricity production in the U.S. The primary fuel type was natural gas, which accounts for almost 39% of total energy production. Coal is the second most used common fuel type at almost 22%, and nuclear is at 19%. And when you look at this pie chart here, you can see that the renewable energy sources are very low guys the only one that even comes close to any of those is wind energy at 9.2 percent and then you got solar at 2.8 percent hydro at six percent those are the only renewable energy sources that we have on this list that literally account for like 15 percent of total u.s energy production so everybody who's at home claiming that they're saving the environment by plugging in their car every day it's a big fat lie guys the only way i would say that maybe that's true if you have your own solar panels in order to charge it up every day but even then there was production to make those solar plant panels right you know they didn't just appear out of thin air it's not a natural element you know things need to be mined things need to be you know gas needs to be burned to make those solar panels as well so unfortunately people that think that they're saving the environment by driving an electric car are being misled you know and that's why i wanted to make this video because just like with the housing market guys i've made so many different videos helping people be aware of things to look out for when it comes to buying you know you need to know how much your property taxes are going to be you need to know uh how much the HOA fees are going to be you need to know about special assessments you need to know all these different things when it comes to buying a house well I think it's just as important to know this stuff when it comes to buying a car because much more people out there can afford to buy a, a car than they can to buy a house right now and even though that's becoming unaffordable as well it's always going to be more accessible than buying a house and obviously you can't trust the car salesman to give you the real deal on this so I'm here giving you the real deal but a lot of these companies are losing a ton of money on these cars guys like the Ford F-150 Lightning for example they only sold about 24,000 of them in 2023 and each one of them lost about $36,000 per vehicle like how do you stay in business as a company and sell vehicles at that huge of a loss okay like that's not possible and i know a thing is true about this because like i said earlier i'm kind of a technology nerd and i love playstation okay i've had every single playstation since the very first one and guess what guess what they do at, over at sony they sell the sony playstation for a loss because they're putting out this revolutionary new piece of technology and they sell it for a very low price and they lose money on it but why do they do that because people need to buy the games so that's where they really make their money is on selling you the games right but what does an electric car have to sell you after you already bought the car nothing right especially if you're charging the car at home you have your own electricity and all that there is nothing else to sell you so this is not a sustainable business model for any of these automakers to continue to lose money sale after sale 
And just keep in mind too, guys, that a lot of these big wigs, especially like our president and you know congressmen and other people who have a big push for electric cars, just know that they're flying across the world and back and forth in their private jets every day. And you think that thing's burning electricity? No, it's burning gas. One thing I almost forgot to have mentioned that's extremely important also about this transition to electric cars that you really don't hear often is the fatalities when it comes to accidents with these cars is much higher. And that is because, not because they're not safer or they're not as safe, it's because the cars are so much heavier than internal combustion engine cars, up to a, a thousand to, to 1200 pounds heavier in many cases. So, you know, I'm not a physics expert, but when you have something heavier moving towards something else that's really heavy, it does a lot more damage and more people are dying with these accidents. So the more uh, electric cars we have on the road, then the more fatalities you're gonna see when there's an accident because of this. And it's something really important to mention because car accidents are already, you know, a huge problem in our country and really across the world, but it's gonna become an even bigger issue and a more dangerous issue as more electric cars get adopted. And I don't see how they're gonna fix that because the batteries weigh an absolute ton and there's no way to make it weigh less. At least as of right now, there isn't. So another thing to be aware of when thinking about this whole transition to the electric car future. And one last thing I wanna cover about this that's a huge problem also is the repair costs on these EVs are far greater than on a gas-powered car, okay? In fact, Tesla routinely tries to charge people over $20,000 for a battery pack replacement. And there was a YouTuber, the name of his channel is called Hoovy's Garage. So you can probably go check this out and uh, look at some of the videos this guy has done. But he had somebody bring him a Tesla that supposedly needed a $22,000 battery replacement according to Tesla. And he was able to fix the car for uh, $5,000, okay? He didn't do a full battery replacement. He was able to replace certain modules and the total cost was $5,000. But the problem is he said that even though I was able to make this repair, that the car is still gonna need a new battery eventually, that this repair is not gonna last. It's kind of like putting a Band-Aid on you know, a gushing wound. It's gonna get you there for a little while, but it's not gonna last probably more than a year, he says. However, the guy with the car says it's been two years now and it's still holding up. So I guess it's kind of like the luck of the draw. If you go through one of these module repairs and don't do the full battery pack replacement, but just think about that. $22,500 is the price quoted by Tesla to get your battery completely replaced, out of warranty. To get the car repaired outside of Tesla with Hoovy's garage still costs five grand. Now, think about the last time you took your car in for service, your internal combustion engine car, and it costs five grand. Most people would have a heart attack if they heard that was gonna be their repair bill for their car. I mean, that's basically equivalent to getting a brand new engine, guys. But actually, if you need a brand new uh, battery in these Teslas, you're better off just going out and buying a brand new car for the cost, it sounds like. So I have to jump on this and I have to attack this because there's just not enough good reasons right now to switch to an electric car. And until there are, I personally wouldn't be doing it. I'd be cautioning other people against doing it as well, unless you really know what you're getting yourself into. This can really mess up your life, guys. You can have a high car payment. You can end up with a car that doesn't run properly, doesn't get the proper amount of range, won't take a charge, dealing with warranty issues. Like even if the car's under warranty, let me tell you, it's not fun to deal with warranty issues because you think you're the only one that has a brand new car? No. A bunch of other people are in there dealing with warranty issues and you can be without your car for over a week in many cases. So just because it's under warranty and it's free to repair doesn't mean it's going to be convenient. I really want to start making more videos that are like topics that are something that we're all thinking about and we've all heard about but not many people are discussing and I'm still going to be talking about real estate but I've taken a few chances here on the channel and talked about a few other things that are completely outside of real estate like this. And you guys seem to enjoy it. And so do I. I love stepping outside of my comfort zone and discussing something new here on the channel. And so as long as you guys keep enjoying it, that's what I'm going to keep doing. So guys, if you want to buy an electric car, by all means, go ahead. 
Just make sure you've done your research, make sure you know what you're getting yourself into, and make sure it's the right choice for your specific lifestyle, just like buying a house, okay? It's the same thing. You just need to make sure it's the right move for you, but it's not the right move for everyone yet. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you don't wanna wait for my next video to come out, check out this one on the screen right over here, and I'll see you in the next one.